Hello and welcome to National Focus for Friday, August 9, 2024. I am Adisi Burton. In the headlines, Prime Minister Skerritt warns NCDs pose a major threat to OECS workforce and economy. 94th cohort of Peace Corps volunteers to take up assignments across the Eastern Caribbean and successful summer school program wraps up in Roseau Valley. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt says there must be the political will within the OECS and CARICOM if food security and sustainability efforts are to be made a reality. The Prime Minister has expressed concern over hindrances to intra-regional trade, while these same countries in the region have no difficulty exporting to countries outside the region. If we're serious about it, it is just a matter of us going to our respective cabinets and passing SROs and removing those barriers. It's as simple as this. We cannot go and tell the World Bank and tell the IMF to change the structure, and we are unwilling to change our structure within the OECS and CARICOM. And so this is why something that I don't like participating in these kind of conversations because we're not serious about it, something I feel. Because I believe in action, not words. And we have just too much talk around these things, around the CARICOM and the OECS, and therefore we need to action. The Honorable Prime Minister believes the first course of action would be to determine what are the setbacks to trade within the region with a view to eliminating them. Let us identify those obstacles, those trade barriers, those, those um, phytosanitary um, limitations that we put in, just, just to prevent us from importing and exporting stuff through our respective countries. And the reality is, my friends, if any one of us in this OECS countries are going to eat, are going to consume our three meals from a supermarket, we'll have a problem. We'll have a financial problem because we can't afford it. And we'll have a health problem as we are confronting the OECS. The Prime Minister warns that steps must be taken to address the issue of increasing non-communicable diseases, NCDs, by eating what is grown naturally within the region. The high incidence of diabetes and hypertension and strokes are clearly linked to our eating habits or consumption patterns. And unless we, we change this, we're going to see an extraordinary increase in running our health systems in these countries. Because every health system in OECS is highly subsidized by the government. And how can we afford this? We can prevent and we can reduce the incidence of, hyper, of, of CNCDs in our countries. And I keep saying to us in the Caribbean that the greatest threat to our survival it's CNCDs. Prime Minister Skerritt observed that the impact of non-communicable diseases on the productive population and the resulting economic impact can be devastating to these small island economies in the region. People were scared of COVID-19 and they said to our country in, in the during COVID time, COVID is not our threat, CNCDs is our threat. Because when you have a 40-year-old with four children, suffer multiple strokes, unable to work, What's going to happen to these four children? And so there is, a, there is, I believe that there is a regional emergency where food security is concerned, access to food is concerned, and the 
health emergency. And all of these things are linked. Government officials, representatives and guests have convened for the swearing-in ceremony of the 94th cohort of Peace Corps volunteers for the Eastern Caribbean. A total of 17 individuals took their oath via virtual swearing-in ceremony on Friday. Since they have chosen to serve in the Peace Corps, hoping to make a difference, following nine weeks of intensive training in preparation for service, the volunteers will now move to their communities and continue to learn about Eastern Caribbean culture, to support literacy at schools, and engage in community service projects. For the next two years, the volunteers will be assigned to their host OECS countries as literary resource volunteers. During the two years of their service, the volunteers will share their U.S. diverse culture and backgrounds, with the students in their communities, will make many Eastern Caribbean friends and will establish a lifetime connection with this region. The Peace Corps has provided significant support to countries since its inception. It has been 16 three plus years since President John Kennedy and the first Peace Corps Director Sergeant Shriver sent the first Peace Corps volunteers overseas for their two years of service. From the onset, Peace Corps was the aspiration of visionaries who could see the possibility of individuals working together to build cultural bridges and understanding and how this could become a powerful instrument for world peace through friendship. And since that day, many Americans have served in the Peace Corps with honor and dignity. The volunteers here today are the modern practitioners of that same leg legacy. Dominica remains thankful for the contributions provided through the Peace Corps. We have seen environmental clubs, we have seen libraries being set up, we have seen all kinds of things, but most of all we have seen our literacy rate rising to 94% in Dominica. And I am sure, I am sure that what the Peace Corps volunteers contributed to this success, we should not let it go unnoticed. And even as our literacy is improving, we are also looking into other fields. So therefore, for us in Dominica, I urge you to use the opportunity as you do literacy to incorporate some of the things that we are looking forward to. Honorable Alfred hopes to see the continuity of programs initiated by volunteers of the Peace Corps. I admonish us to those of us on island who will benefit from these programs to ensure that we have a plan for continuity. Because sometimes after the Peace Corps volunteers leave, then some of the things drop. We need to have a group to continue, otherwise it will just be a season. We do not want a program for a season, we want a program for a reason. God bless you and on behalf of the Ministry of Education, I am very happy and I hope I see you at your school sometime. Parliamentary representative for the Rose of Valley, Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, has congratulated coordinators and students of a three-week summer school program in Wharton Waven. The program began July 22 and ended August 9, 2024. One of the two instructors, Laverne Bruno, spoke of the program of activities. So we did a group of educational activities, also some fun activities like arts and crafts, our um, educational activities included mathematics, English, um, science, basic science. We also did some fun activities. We had our farm day where we had a farmer coming to speak to our students, um, teach them a few techniques about farming, show them how to do certain planting, um, certain planting um, farming techniques. So our students got engaged, they were engaged in the farming process. Uh, the farmer um, gave them an opportunity where they could plant, where they could, um, you know, um, engage into the soil and all of that good stuff. A health day, arts and craft, sporting activities and a walk through the village formed part of the program. Meanwhile, Parliamentary Representative for the Roseau Valley Constituency, Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, congratulated Laverne Bruno and Danik Bruno, the two instructors of the program. He said he was convinced that the participants learned. I know you all definitely learned something from the summer camp. The summer camp in the sense that it taught you all something about 
health and how to take care of your bodies. It also taught you all something about farming and agriculture and how we plant the foods that we have to eat to keep us healthy. And I know also you all taught a certain bit about the environment, how we keep the environment clean and how we dispose of our garbage, etc. And how we don't just dump plastics all over the place. You had your walk through the village and you could have also your ideas of how do we keep our village cleaner and what can we do to make our village a better place. You all had some sporting activities which helps to free up the mind a little bit and just to have you relax as well as to keep you active as well as to help you with your health. So it's a lot of things you all did. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Advocates are sounding the call for greater collaboration to prevent child abuse and neglect in Dominica. Public awareness and advocacy is central in eradicating child abuse. Leading this cause is the Kalinago Child Support Foundation, KCSF Inc., in partnership with the Salabia Mission Project. Child abuse is a dark reality that we must confront with unwavering resolve. It affects not only the victims, but also our communities, and our future. We need your voices, your platforms, and your reach to amplify this message. Your participation can help us educate the public, raise awareness, and create a culture where child abuse is not tolerated, and every child feels safe and protected. KCSF Inc. was commended for their recently launched Child Abuse Prevention Banner Initiative targeting business institutions. I just want to make sure that you know that this is much more than a call to put a poster up in your company's name. It's a call to do something about child abuse in your community. Whether it's, it's not just the Kalinago Territory, please note, these posters are going all over the country, right? This is not, this is not just the Kalinago Territory. The Kalinago have set us an example. They've set us an example in good things, right? This is a good initiative. This is an important initiative. And I really appreciate that the posters aren't just going up in the territory. They're going everywhere. And if you're wondering what to do when you know about something, let me remind you, we have mandatory reporting now. That means if you know, you must tell. One of the matters raised at the launch was the current age of consent in Dominica. Anybody under 18 is a child and therefore should not be treated as an adult. They cannot vote, they cannot drive, they cannot buy alcohol, they cannot have sex and ha uh, giving consent for sex. Um, legally, that's 16. But is somebody ready to be a mother at 17? Really? Is somebody ready to be a father at 17? I think that uh, maybe Mrs. Coffee Weeks might tell us about that, but I think that the age of consent should be the same as the age to vote and to drive. President of Dominica, Her Excellency Sylvani Burton, stands in solidarity with the movement and is committed to the welfare of the nation's children. In her inaugural address at the first meeting of the second session of the 11th Parliament, President Burton appealed to the public to protect and care the younger generation. For a small population like ours, one case of abuse is one too many. These are just reported cases. There may be many unreported cases out there. Those vulnerable and disadvantaged children and adolescents need our attention, our time, and protection. The government is playing its part. What are the rest of us doing? 
Will we continue to turn a deaf ear to these cries for help? I hope not. We have to confront the societal problem as a collective frontally. Kalinago Child Support Foundation is a non-profit organization working towards developing, nurturing, and empowering Kalinago children since its inception in 2010. Director General of the OECS, Didakos Jules, says the agriculture sector in the OECS has faced multifaceted challenges over the last 15 years, leading to its decline and contraction. Mr. Jules was addressing the first ever OECS Youth in Agriculture Symposium hosted by Dominica this week under the theme Growing the Future and Harvesting Dreams. Addressing these issues requires a concerted effort to revitalize the sector through policies that encourage youth participation, innovation, and sustainable practices. Recognizing this worrying trend, the OECS Ministers of Agriculture agreed that youth should be a priority pillar in the implementation of the OECS um, Food and Agriculture Systems Transformation, what we call the FAST strategy, um, covering the period especially 2022 to 2032. Consequently, at the seventh meeting of the OECS Council of Ministers meeting in Grenada in June 2023, the OECS Commission was mandated to develop a youth and agriculture program. This symposium is a key component of that program, and the objectives of the Youth and Agriculture Symposium are ambitious but vital. One, promote the agriculture sector for youth involvement. Two, encourage and support youth participation in all stages of the agriculture value chain, so not just production, but also processing, export, marketing, the entire chain. Three, raise the profile of youth already in agriculture to inspire others. And there are some amazing stories across the OECS of young people utilizing precisely the technology that Minister Skerritt outlined a while ago and experimenting successfully with those things. Another important goal of the Youth in Agriculture program is to build the capacity of youth in critical areas that are limiting their participation in the sector. The Youth in Agriculture program also allows the opportunity for youth to shape how they participate in decision making. There are a number of innovations that we have introduced in our ministerial councils. We have started ensuring that when we have meetings of ministers, whether it's education, youth, health, uh, but education and, and health in particular, and now in this case agriculture, the key stakeholders are invited. They're not just invited to the opening ceremony, but they sit in an outer circle of the ministerial to follow and listen to what is happening. And in one of our education meetings in Antigua, Minister Darren Matthew of the Minister of Education in Antigua suggested, why don't we ask the young people for their views? And on a particular subject matter, they very timidly stepped forward and ex you know, expressed their views, and thereafter, they took over the meeting. The OECS Youth in Agriculture Symposium closing ceremony took place at the Intercontinental Hotel in Portsmouth. GIS will bring you an update in our next newscast. That's the news and now for your rudder advisory. Lingering moisture trailing a tropical wave is expected to result in partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with a few showers this afternoon. Thereafter, a gradual drying of the atmosphere is likely as a ridge pattern builds across the area. Low concentration of dust haze can be expected during the next few days. People with respiratory sensitivities are advised to continue taking the necessary precautions to avoid complications. Slight to moderate seas can be expected in open water, with waves peaking near 7 feet. Meanwhile, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring a tropical wave located over the tropical Atlantic, several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Conditions are expected to become conducive for development and a tropical depression could form while it approaches the Lesser Antilles by early next week. Interest in Dominica and the Lesser Antilles should monitor the, the progress of this system and begin making preparations. As we're in the midst of the hurricane season, it is critical to take action to safeguard yourself and your loved ones. For today's hurricane tip, select a family member or friend who isn't in the affected area to communicate with in the event of an evacuation. This contact can be the person who lets others know where you are and that you're safe, so you won't have to spend precious time doing so. 
And now for the Creole News highlights with Jeno Jacob. Ici, premier symposium jeunes gens en agriculture en OECS et organisé par le ministre agriculture et puis d'autres pays OECS. Il y a aussi une exhibition pour du agriculture en Windsor Park Stadium l'année. Nathaniel Lovell en la vie miel en Kulibistri. Bagaille et miel, um, c'est un travail qui est né en l'eau, en force et en so, on est pour. Um, comment moi je dis ça? Oui, on est pour chahir en l'eau, bagaille loup. Oui, c'est ça que je voulais dire. Et c'est miel là, c'est miel. Uh, miel qui a beaucoup de temps. Donc, so, um, il y a ça. Mais um, c'est depuis où um, vini à dain, il y a un coupon ça, c'est miel là qui a fait à quitter l'année là. Donc, um, où ça a coupon comment pour faire si vous. Comme la belle autre, William, il parle de nous contre votre rencontre. Je suis propriétaire de of the watering can is Annika Bellot, see Annika Bellot. Um, he has a business for a long time. And he has made all of the um, attention to the um, plan that he doesn't need a lot of work. He doesn't need a lot of work. He doesn't need a lot of work all the time. Um, parce que c'est un bon manier pour environment uh, pour environment là parce que il pas ca il pas ca faire il pas ca pour autant ressources comme je Dominique parler pour nous contre business l'huile moi commencé après hurricane maria uh, après après hurricane avant hurricane maria moi j'étais travailler à la télé tout ça mais place fermée après hurricane maria et puis moi j'ai besoin mettre la main moi pour pour faire quelque chose pour ça Um, chen mwen. C'est pour ça que je um, tape en l'idée pour pou, pou faire l'huile. <laughs> Les mois juste commencé, Dominique Pate ni coco. Parce que je me après Hurricane Maria. Donc, so, pour moi, je coco, je vais acheter ces hordes saint Lucy. Pour moi, parce que je dis que c'est ça que je fais. Et puis c'est ça que je fais. Sana Harris, Hord La Pointe, parle de nous contre Nature's Touch. Nous avons fait toucher les gens et tout ça nous 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 nou produit nous avons fait nous-mêmes, ok? So nous avons fait produit hors moringa avec turmeric, cocoma. Nous avons fait produit hors lemongrass. Comment est-ce que tu dis ça créole? Citronnelle, yes. Et nous avons fait produit hors b. B oil or bay leaf. Why then? We. Oui. Even nuka fair produit hold cannabis. Marijuana. We. Oui. Even nuni produit sase pu lips lev. Lev. We. Oui. Even ini rosemary. Even mint. We. Oui. Even nuni di fe wa um, massage nuka fair uh, at a um, spa. Ma parlement pour vous au sant. Honorable Melissa Skerritt, vle moun ki ka viv an vil ouzo sase, pante le gym et pi dot podwi agrikolte. I te ka pale an yon symposium pou jen jan ou ICS a agrikolte. I di, te vid an vil ouzo se yon opportunite pou plante le gym kon karot, leti, melon, tomat, choupom et pi kokom. I di moun sa leve ou sa servi teknoloji pou wende yo ou fe sa. Mis agrikolte ni asistans pou wende tout plante Plante tout kalite plan. Premier minister Dominic Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt kosyone kont NCD, sa se maladi kont tension, pressure, epi sik, diabetes. Top moun ka mor epi se maladi sa la. Plante sa nou ka manje epi manje sa nou ka plante lokal. Sa se tout asun nouvel an koyol, chanje nou antan siklon, kontinue fe preparasyon bonè, mache epi pwa solu la ou ka soti. Non, Monsieur Dino Jacob, au revoir. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis.dominica.gov.dm. 
From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Adicia Burton. Thank you for watching.